Hello class, this is chapter four, problem solving, proactive policing. The objectives we're going to cover in this chapter include the following. We will explain how problem solving requires changes in the way police treat incidents. We will compare and contrast efficiency and effectiveness, noting which one community policing emphasizes. We will also identify the first step in a problem solving approach. We will describe the four stages of problem solving used in the SARA or SARA model. We will summarize the purpose and goal of the DOC model. And finally, we will explain the focus of crime mapping. Problem solving is proactively identifying problems and making decisions about how to best deal with them. Community policing is proactive rather than reactive. The problem solving approach to policing involves looking at the problem as well as efficiency and effectiveness in addressing the problem. Let's talk about what is problem oriented policing. A problem is a cluster of similar, related, or recurring incidents rather than a single incident, a substantive community concern, and a unit of police business. Identifying problems is the first step to address possible causes and correct them. From incidents to problems, the primary work unit is the professional model. That is an isolated event that requires a police response. Goldstein in 1990, and this is again in your text and you need to read this. Goldstein in 1990 criticized the professional model of policing as being incident driven and suggests that a more productive response to problems would be to identify and respond why incidents occur. As far as CHEERS is concerned, CHEERS is the acronym for Community, Harm, Expectation, Events, Recurring, and Similarity. In other words, it's an acronym that defines everything we were just talking about. A community that perceives a persistent harm or problem, the expectation that the police will gather together as a professional organization and handle it. The reporting of recurring events and similarity of these reported events. From incidents to problems, the primary work unit in the professional model is the incident. That is an isolated event that requires a police response. In 1990, Goldstein criticized the professional model of policing as being incident driven and suggests that a more productive response to problems would be to identify and respond why incidents occur to begin with. In terms of problem oriented policing and community policing, Problem solving has been one of the three components of community policing since it was introduced, but confusion between problem oriented policing and community policing occasionally exists. Some practitioners view the two as opposing approaches while others equate community policing and problem solving. Here's a discussion for you based on the discussion of problem oriented policing. Identify a problem in your daily life that can be addressed through this model. Now let's talk about being efficient and effective. Addressing a substantive problem. This shift of focus calls for recognizing that just handling incidents often do not get to the root of the problem itself. There are some common mistakes in problem solving. The first step in problem solving is to group incidents as problems. 
Common mistakes in attempting to solve problems include spending too much energy on unimportant details, failing to resolve important issues, having a closed mind, being secretive about true feelings, and not expressing ideas. Continuing with addressing substantive problems, incidents are overt symptoms of problems themselves. In terms of problem solving, group incidents can be viewed as problems, and also police departments tend to combine steps and approach these problems with theoretical assumptions. Each incident needs to be viewed not through a singular lens, but as an individual problem. If you approach every problem as a theoretical assumption, then you're going to have incorrect assumptions. The SARA or SARA model is a four state problem solving process. The first steps are scanning and analysis. Scanning and analysis are integrally related. The sources for analyzing a community's problems provide the basis for analysis. Scanning refers to identifying recurrent problems and analysis examines the identified problems scope, cause, and effects. Response is acting to alleviate the problem and assessment refers to evaluating the effectiveness of the intervention. Thus, you end up with the acronym SARA, S-A-R-A. As far as responses by law enforcement, officers can respond in a variety of ways to a single incident. Established patterns of response are generally followed but there are still exceptions. There are as many ways to handle an incident as there are officers, and many officers may be very imaginative. Sometimes there are many responses that are highly routinized, and the most prevalent responses to identify problems are conventional strategies such as enforcement and patrol. Let's talk about assessing problems. And officers can respond in a variety of ways to a single incident. Established patterns of response are generally followed, but there are still exceptions. When addressing responses to problems, process evaluation determines if the response was implemented as planned, and the impact evaluation determines if the problem declined. Assessments should include both qualitative and quantitative data. Qualitative data examines the quality of a response and is most frequently determined by surveys, focus groups, or tracking complaints and compliments. Quantitative data examines the amount of change as a result of a response and is most frequently measured by before and after action. The SARA model in action. There are many examples of projects that have demonstrated measurable success in reducing crime and public safety problems by adopting the SARA method. And just to remind you, the acronym S stands for scanning a situation, A is analysis of the situation, R is your response, and A is the assessment that follows an incident. That's the SARA model in action. Here's the discussion question for you. Divide yourselves into study groups again and assign each group one of the problems identified in the previous discussion question. If you think back to the discussion question we had previously, have students in your group use the SARA model to address their specific problem. We're going to talk now about making ethical decisions. Ethical concerns often surround undercover police work such as sting operations. Sting operations carry the potential of entrapment issues. 
Entrapment is the act of government agents to induce a person to commit a crime that is not normally considered by the person for the purpose of prosecuting that person. Despite the ethical dilemmas associated with stings, police argue that their benefits far outweigh the potential costs and that deception is a quote-unquote soft coercion compared to other types that police are authorized to use. Now let's talk about mediation as a problem-solving tool in that not all calls require law enforcement. Mediation, sometimes called Alternative Dispute Resolution, or ADR, is shared problem-solving by parties in dispute guided by a neutral person. A mediator is a neutral party that helps to guide contesting parties to a dispute resolution. Let's talk about problem-solving policing crime-specific planning and crime analysis, a more precise strategy. Crime-specific planning involves reviewing the offense, the target, impact, and response. There is an International Association of Crime Analysts, the IACA, which is an advocacy group that promotes professional standards, practical educational opportunities, and it is an international network. It has computer software available for probability assessments. Now we're going to talk about ComStat. ComStat is a progressive, goal-oriented, information-driven police management strategy. The crime control strategies that form the foundation of ComStat policing include hotspot policing, problem-solving approaches, and broken windows enforcement. Not everyone finds ComStat effective and or ethical. Technology should not diminish appropriate and necessary officer discretion, nor should it form the basis for illegal productivity goals and quotas. Now we're going to talk about crime mapping. Crime mapping involves maps that show where crimes have occurred and can help direct police resources to locations where they are most needed and enable law enforcement to protect citizens more effectively. Hotspots are areas where incidents of crime and disorder tend to cluster in close proximity to one another. There are several theories that attempt to analyze why crime and disorder concentration exist. They include street theories, neighborhood theories, and other large area theories. As far as mapping in practice, it again identifies hot spots and it is used to track sex offenders and is enhanced by geographic information systems and also GPS systems as well. Geographic information systems is a system, a geographic information system that enhances traditional mapping by adding information from various other databases. It correlates crime with vacant housing units, parks, or schools it looks at the income level of a particular census tract. It also looks at patterns of car thefts and locations of chop shops. There are other things that it is used for, but these are some examples. Geospatial statistical analysis takes GIS technology a step further by allowing analysts to identify areas within the community. According to routine activity theory, which is a principle of environmental criminology, a crime occurs at the intersection of a motivated offender, a suitable target, and an absent or ineffective guardian. With geographic profiling, 
This takes the locations of past crimes and, using a complex mathematical algorithm, calculates probabilities of a suspect's residence. A similar approach is a theory called the least effort principle, which proposes that criminals tend to commit crimes within a comfort zone that is located near but not too close to their residence. Here's a point of discussion for you to consider. Identify a new upcoming technology that you believe may be effective in combating crime. Let's look at problem solving at work, some promising practices from the field. In Peoria, Illinois, police employed by the Armadillo Project to combat nuisances involved an old armored car that was used as a fortified surveillance vehicle when patrol cars were vandalized for attempting to monitor problem areas. In Charlotte, Mecklenburg, North Carolina, Police combated commercial burglaries, particularly those in storage facilities, by working with companies to establish best safety practices and the use of disc locks. Now, there were a couple of projects that were given awards. The Herman Goldstein Award projects involved one where the Herman Goldstein Award that was first introduced in 1993, recognized outstanding police officers and agencies that engaged in innovative and effective problem-solving efforts. The Tilly Award encourages and awards good practicing in implementing problem-oriented policing. Now let's summarize what we've gone over in this chapter. The first thing we looked at was a problem-solving approach that requires police to group incidents and identify underlying causes of problems in the community. We talked about analysis and how it should take into account the magnet phenomenon, efficiency and effectiveness. We also looked at problem-solving, group incidents as problems, and the SARA model, which is scanning, analysis, response, and assessment. We included discussion about the DOC model, which is dilemmas, options, and consequences, which challenges officers to carefully consider their decisions as well as the short and long-term consequences of those decisions. And finally, we talked about crime mapping shifts and how it focuses from the criminal to the location of the crimes themselves or the potential locations of the crimes. As always, class, thank you for your time and attention. Please be sure to contact your instructor with any questions you may have regarding anything we covered in this chapter. There's a lot of important material in this chapter that you need to not only read your text carefully about, but also do some research on your own so that you can learn some important detail about things that were not necessarily covered in the text itself. As always, again, thank you for your time and attention. We'll see you next class.